Hello, my lovelies. So, I promised you that I was going to try out this new chicken place, and I have, and, um, well, I haven't yet. I ordered from there, and I really like their ordering technique. What you do is you call, you place your order, they uh, take your payment over the phone, if you choose to do that. I did. They take your name and number, then you drive up, and they have numbered parking spaces, you park, you call, you give your name and number, they bring out your order, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This place is the talk of the town, to say the least. So let's look at what we have here. I don't want to say the name because I'm afraid it's a family-owned business and people figure out where I'm at, but it's definitely something that everybody's talking about. So here's chicken, fries, bread, Coleslaw, I'm not sure how much of this you're getting. Coleslaw. And it comes with a special sauce. Think Zaxby's, but not. So I'll just show it to you individually too. Chicken. Crinkle cut fries. Toast. Coleslaw, a secret sauce, and a secret sauce. It all looks really good. Plus, I have my favorite cup full of black tea, water, red velvet macarons, and I'm excited about those. And of course, my bio salute, strawberry. Cheers. Mm. So good. Okay. So also to go with this video, I have a story. Yeah. And am I the asshole story? So, buckle in is going to be a good one. First bite. Mmm. That's good. Perfect amount of crunch. I've had crinkle cut fries before that were either too soggy or too crunchy and they lost their flavor and I didn't like that. So, yeah, that's not a big thing for me. But these are delicious. <coughs> Excuse me. Tickle my throat a little bit. Let's try the coleslaw. Oh, wow. Mm. You hear that crunch? Mm-hmm. That is good. Let's try the chicken. Because that's what they're actually known for, is their chicken. Mmm. Fresh. Moist, delicious. Oh, wow. Mm. 
so good. Okay, so, while I eat, I'm going to tell you the story. My mother and I have always had a rocky relationship, but I still care for her, and I've been her caretaker now for mm, quite a few years. She doesn't drive, she's disabled, and my father, he has Alzheimer's, so he doesn't drive anymore either, because he gets road rage and he forgets where he's going. I have a sister, she doesn't drive, but her husband does, and he doesn't work. But I stepped in the place of caretaker, taking him to the store, buying, you know, taking him out to eat when we did go to, out to eat, having him over for the holidays, helping out with stuff. So you kind of get the gist. You kind of get the idea of where this is going. So anyway, okay. This past Christmas, I got very sick. And it caused me to have to quarantine. Mmm. The toast is perfect. So good. Unfortunately for me, quarantine happened during Christmas. So we were going to have Christmas dinner with my parents at my house. It was just going to be the, just the, what the CDC considers a household since I'm her caretaker. They consider her part of my household too because we see each other almost, or we used to, almost on an every other day basis so it was inevitable and I told them that they needed to quarantine also because exposure I don't know if they did I don't know you know she doesn't tell me everything I have a sneaky suspicion she did it but we did and I explained to her that unfortunately Christmas fell during quarantine but five days after quarantine ended was a Saturday, and I suggested that five days after quarantine, so that was an extra five days, so 19 days, we could do Christmas dinner at my house. Well, I hate to say this, but my mother has always been um, very volatile towards me. Like, nothing I do or say is right. I love her, but it's the truth. And her go-to response with me is to start screaming and yelling. And with my, with my complex PTSD, that's not a good thing. It's, it really spirals me into a depression. I get anxiety. I get upset. It's just, it's, it's ended up in the hospital before. And I don't want to go there. That's not where I want to be. Not with everything that's going on. I was always stressed. I have children. My youngest son caught it. It was a very stressful time. My husband caught it. I caught it. It was just... Not a very Merry Christmas. We also care for his, his parents, my husband's parents. So we told them the same thing. They took it in stride. They were like, okay, we'll quarantine. No problem. Sure. Yeah, we'll do Christmas whenever you decide to do Christmas. It's not a big issue. We're all part of the same household. We see them. You know, when we don't see my parents, we see his parents. We help every way we can. We just want them to be healthy and happy and able to have groceries. And go to the doctor. 
and whatever else they need to do. We just want to be there for them. They were fine. We did Christmas later. It was glorious. After we all tested negative. Every single one of us tested. And we tested negative. And none of us have been sick. We keep a close eye on each other. And everybody's doing wonderfully. I'm well. My husband's well. They never got sick. My youngest son is well. Eli, he's good. We're all well. This right here, this is something that y'all all know about me. I've got post-nasal drip. It just happens. Um, see, <laughs> especially when I eat. So anyway, she called me a liar. And I mean, anybody who talked to me could tell I was sick. I was burned up with a fever. I was nasally and congested and breathing hard. If you saw the video, I just looked, ugh, gosh. I look back on those videos and I'm like, oh my goodness. Ugh, I look pitiful. You could look at me and tell, like, my skin was pale. I was sweaty. I just didn't look like I felt well. And it just, that's the way I felt. I didn't feel well. I just felt really, really yuck. Just, you know. Well, she says some really hurtful things. And I mean really hurtful things to me. About me as a daughter, me as a wife, me as a mother. I don't know. Who says these things to their child that they're supposed to love? Needless to say, I hung up the phone. I just click, gone. And I took it one step further. I changed my number. I'm tired of being abused. I'm tired of being talked to like I'm trash. I'm tired of being screamed and yelled at. I'm tired of being manipulated. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the blame and the shame and the finger pointing and the accusations and the manipulation. I gave my sister my number, but made her swear to me that she would tell my mom that she didn't have my number. My sister and I also talked to through uh, Facebook Messenger. Now the only way she could contact me was through Facebook Messenger. My mother refuses to friend me on Facebook. So, she can't contact me. There's no contact. Besides, if she were to try to add me now, I wouldn't let her. I'd just be like, nope, sorry. For me, the manipulation stops here. It just stops. No more. But recently, now here's where it gets interesting.
a few choice people in my life, I'm not going to name who, have come out to say that they think that I'm an asshole. That I've cut up my mom from... That I've cut her off from living. But remember, I have a sister. With a husband who doesn't work. Who live in the area. So, my question is, do you guys think I'm the asshole? I don't feel I am. I feel I, like I've been victimized over and over again, and I'm done, and I'm drawing the line in the sand, and I'm saying enough. No more. I'm trying to protect my children. And my mental sanity. My mental health is important too. And I think you just come to a point in your life that enough is enough. Definitely comment below, though, and let me know your opinions and your feelings on the situation. I want to know. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's nothing I'm missing. I want to take a moment just to say, this food's delicious. <laughs> I see what everybody's talking about. Everything's cooked to perfection. Mm. Mm -mm. I want to lighten the moment a little bit. <laughs> the mood. So anyway, what did everybody do for New Year's? I sat home <laughs> and watched movies and pop popcorn and drank wine with my husband. Kids were asleep. Okay, another thing. For those of you who are trying to guess my name, how do you all keep coming up with Laura? Who is Laura? Do I look like a Laura? I don't think I look like a Laura. Well, I hate to pop your bubble, burst your bubble, whatever this thing is, but I'm not Laura. I'm, that's not my name. But I love it that y'all are trying. <laughs> Makes my day. But I swear, every single one of you come up with Laura. Anybody want to fill me in on that, um, mystery? I have... A suspicion and if that's the case shame on you 
I've already told you my children's name, and you've seen their pictures. But I am going to release my husband's first name. So, okay, to recap, we have Elijah, who is my youngest. He's three, and he has autism. Then there's my middle child, Elena. She's 11, and she's my only daughter. And then there's my oldest, Nathaniel. He's 14, and he is awesome. What more can I say? He's an awesome kid. All my kids are awesome, but... He's really awesome. And he's into martial arts. Like I said, no last names, first names only. But he is pretty awesome. And uh, what can I say about my other children? My daughter, Elena, she's highly intelligent. And my son, Elijah, he's a bright ray of sunshine. So there's a compliment for everybody. And then my husband, get ready. His name is Shannon. Yep, that's my husband's name, Shannon. What's my name? Oh, you're going to have to keep guessing. <laughs> I'm not telling yet. Mm -mm -mm. That'll have to come later. I bet you'll never guess. And those of you that know, shh, don't say anything. It's a surprise. Well, now I'm getting about full, so. There goes my nose again. <laughs> Let me try a few of these back rolls. Red velvet people. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So good. I'm not sure if it's going to focus. Mm. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. The food was excellent. Comment below if you think I'm the asshole or not. I know the video is a little bit longer. But I sure did enjoy talking to you. Love you all. Stay safe out there. It's getting crazy. Bye.